This is a GFCI outlet. This is an AFCI outlet. And this is a surge protection outlet. So the question is, do you need all three of these things? Or do some of these things provide the same level of protection as one of the others? So in this video, we're gonna take a deep dive. We're gonna take a look at the different levels of protection each of these three things has to offer. So that way you can have a better understanding of what protection you need for your house. So first up, let's talk about GFCIs. These are probably the most common thing that you'll see in a house and GFCI stands for ground fault circuit interrupter. So a GFCI is designed to protect against electrocution. So you'll find these mainly in areas that are wet, like you'll find them in bathrooms or kitchens or outside, say, you know, under a porch or under an eave. So GFCI is really designed to protect against the end user from becoming electrocuted because if there's electricity flowing out of this into a wet location, we all know that water conducts electricity. If that happens, there's a chance that someone could get hurt. So the way GFCIs work is there's circuitry that's built into this that monitors the amount of electrical current flowing between the hot side and the neutral side. If there's any kind of a discrepancy between those two values, then the circuitry is designed to shut off the power right at the source. And that will ultimately protect the person using whatever device it is from having a ground fault and potentially hurting the person. Another important thing to know is this will work with or without a ground wire because it's circuitry that's built into this. It doesn't necessarily have to have a ground to work. So that means you can install these in older homes that only have the two wires like the hot and the neutral without the ground wire. And this will still provide you a level of safety against electrocution. So now you might be wondering, well, what's the difference between that and a regular circuit breaker? Well, a regular circuit breaker is designed to protect against too much electrical current flowing through a circuit. So for example, if you have a 15 amp circuit breaker because you have wiring that's rated for 15 amps on a circuit, if you have anything over that amount, then there's going to be an excess amount of heat built up inside of the circuit breaker. It's going to know that there's too much current flowing through the wiring because it can't handle it and it's going to shut off the power. It's the same thing for 20 amp breakers, 30 amp breakers, whatever. Those breakers are designed to match the wiring that's installed in the wall so that way you don't accidentally have too much current flowing through those and start a fire. GFCI protection comes in different forms. You can either get these in a receptacle. So these will protect the devices that are plugged directly into it. You can also wire them up to where they protect other outlets that are not GFCI down the line if you like. And the other thing you can do, the most common is a GFCI breaker, which will protect the entire circuit. So you don't necessarily have to have these as well. Another form I wanna mention is the portable GFCI. Now these are typically ones that you'll find on the ends of devices that are known to come into contact with water. So if you have an electric pressure washer, for example, the cord will typically have GFCI protection built into it. All right, next let's talk about AFCI. So while this looks exactly the same as the last one, it's totally different. So AFCI stands for Arc Fault Circuit Interrupter, and they provide a completely different level of protection than GFCI. So what these are designed to protect against are any kind of arc faults. Now arc fault is pretty much what it sounds like. It's when electricity flows to a location it's not supposed to, and it jumps through the air, it, it arcs or it, it sparks basically. So arc fault protection is really designed to protect against any kind of uh, electrical fires that might happen, especially in areas that you might not be aware of. So the way AFCIs work is these have circuitry that's built into them too, but instead of looking for a ground fault, these are actually monitoring the waveform of the electrical current that's flowing into these devices. So if it sees something that doesn't look right, it's going to shut off the power. In the case of a receptacle, it's gonna shut off the power to the different devices that are plugged into this. But typically with AFCI, you'll find them in the form of a breaker, and the breaker is designed to protect an entire circuit. Now in this case, in my opinion, the best form of AFCI protection is a circuit breaker because if you're gonna protect anything, it's best to protect the entire circuit rather than just the point where you have things plugging in to the receptacle. A lot of times you'll find issues with the wiring in the wall itself. Like there might be a nicked piece of wiring because someone hung up a picture or there might be an issue with some of the electrical connections inside of a box. A uh, receptacle might not pick up on that whereas a circuit breaker will because it's monitoring the entire length of the circuit. Now, AFCI, I know is kind of a debated topic, so let me know in the comments below if you think AFCI is a good idea or not, and your reasons behind it. I'd love to know why. Also, you can get both receptacles and circuit breakers that have both AFCI and GFCI protection. What you wanna do is make sure you look for something called DFCI or dual function circuit interrupter, and that will provide you with not only a GFCI protection, but also both types of AFCI protection for your house. So we talked about AFCI protection, we've talked about GFCI protection, now let's talk about surge protection. So surge protection is designed to protect against any kind of excess voltage or a voltage spike that can occur in your home. Typically this can be from things like a lightning strike outside of your house that can cause excess electricity to flow through the wiring in your house, or it can be even from the power company itself. So if they have a problem on the power company's end, that can actually cause uh, excess voltage to flow through the entire grid and come into your house. 
Now, if you have electronic devices that are plugged in at the time that this happens, say a computer or TV or even modern appliances, those things can get damaged because they're not designed to handle a lot of excess voltage coming through the line. So in order to protect against that, you need to have surge protectors. Now surge protectors can come in a variety of different types. You have this type here, which is just a receptacle that has surge protection built into it. Typically though, you're probably thinking of a surge strip. These are probably the most common. And you can even find surge protection for the entire house that you can wire in at your electrical panel. If you have a lot of electronic devices in your house, I'd highly recommend checking out the whole house surge protection. And you can even couple that with some surge strips as well if you're really wanting to be careful, making sure that all of your electronic devices are protected. But generally, nine times out of 10, surge strips are going to be your best bet for protecting the equipment in your house. I will say too that unlike GFCI protection that does not require a ground wire, Surge protection absolutely requires a ground wire because what happens is when you have the excess voltage come into your house, the surge protectors need to send that excess voltage somewhere and it does that by sending it through the ground wire. So if a ground wire isn't present, then a surge protector is not gonna do its job. And it's also important to note that these surge protectors aren't rated to last forever either. They have a specific type of rating called a joules rating and that joules rating tells the life expectancy for that device. So it's really important to check your surge protectors to make sure they are still protecting your electronic devices and you should have a light on them that tells you whether or not they're being protected or not. And if your devices aren't being protected, then that surge protector needs to be replaced as soon as possible. Another thing to look for is the clamping rating. This value determines how much excess voltage is required in order for the protection to kick in. So the lower value, the better. Also, a lot of surge protectors have a warranty associated with them. So if yours does, make sure you understand what that warranty is, what it covers, what it doesn't cover, and also what the total dollar amount is of the equipment that's connected to that surge protector that it's protecting. You can think of these warranties as another layer of insurance and protection for your electronic devices. So really when it comes to electrical safety, you really need to have all three of these present in your home because all three of these do a totally different job. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Otherwise, I wanna say thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.